Hi, I'm Rick Hertford with PBMA and Wheel Fanatic with a few observations to share about the industry uh, in general and wheel building in particular. But first, thanks for attending CABDA. I mean, it's so important we get FaceTime, even virtual. Uh, it's the way we do business day to day. So I think this industry without FaceTime among colleagues is really missing something big. So sad that that's the way it needs to be this year, but thanks a lot for uh, making an effort and being here and checking me out. Uh, secondly, uh, congrats for uh, finding your way to PBMA because this is definitely the place to find mechanics. Uh, why mechanics? Well, we're the best part of the bike industry. Um, I am very preferential to mechanics. I mean, if it's going to be a, a roommate or a road trip companion or uh, an employee, I'm going to defer to mechanics every time. Um, secondly, I think mechanics have the best perspective on the industry. I mean, so much of it is absorbed in economic shifts and fashion, but the bottom line is machines meeting the daily needs of millions of, of users. And the only way they do that is by functioning in very specific and reliable ways. And the only people who can make sure that happens on a day-to-day -day basis are mechanics or mechanical insight that we can teach as well as, as deliver. So mechanics are definitely the, the heart of our industry, uh, have the best perspective on it, and are the people to seek out when you're at a show like, like you are today. The news in my corner of the industry is that wheel building is booming like I've never seen before. There was a, uh, a party in the late 70s that involved a lot of wheel builders, and uh, many of us got our start way back then. But today is like all the guests from all the parties we've had since all arrived on the same day. It's uh, a big celebration and, uh, and carnival like uh, I have not ever seen before. The question is, why has wheel building not been wiped out? I mean, really, the power of brands, uh, technology that's not available uh, to independents, uh, the economies of mass production, um, the miracles of modern robotic uh, assembly, all these should have just taken a huge toll. But instead, they haven't. And uh, wheel building continues to... Uh, thrive at a, at a very local level? Well, I see two factors uh, accounting for this. One is kind of a parallel that uh, you've noticed with microbreweries. In the last 10 years, they've boomed worldwide. And although the trend was decades in the making, um, something really kicked it off. And I think fundamentally, a lot of people uh, became hungry for small batches and uh, more variety uh, than ever. And they wanted to have some interaction with people who uh, they could identify with, uh, perhaps even in their own county. So uh, much is the case with wheel building. The second factor is that the categories of, of uh, cycling have uh, really grown in number. And uh, consequently, each category is a little bit smaller than the big uh, categories of the past. We used to talk about road bikes. I mean, that's it, no subcategories, and mountain bikes. Now, of course, the scene is fractured by many, many small categories. Each has its own special need of wheels. I mean, we are really in an industry that's driven by wheels. I mean, in, in more ways than one. I mean, imagine the, the aerodynamic era. Certainly there were a lot of um, discussions and development work regarding frames and uh, fitting body position in aerodynamics, but, but nowhere really had as much um, argument and discussion as wheel aerodynamics. The number of wind tunnels and the number of wheel wind tunnel tests that were done really is as great as everything else put together. Um, Second, uh, tubeless systems, um, which have transformed uh, riding for many people, allowing 
pressures lower than ever before and uh, a level of reliability that uh, clincher riders have not enjoyed before. And all of that is a, is a wheel factor. Um, disc brakes, after all, I mean, if you, if you switch to disc brakes, you, you need all new wheels. The disc rides on the wheel. Um, and of course, uh, the revolution in disc brakes uh, throughout cycling has been very wheel centric. Um, fat bikes, fat, fat wheels, uh, large rims. I mean, their development was by wheel centric uh, uh, engineers and uh, experimenters, and the fat scene is. Uh, got its own need in wheels, uh, and the specialty is one that uh, builders have made their own. Um, think also of motors, e-bikes. I mean, uh, not all e-bikes have their motors in the wheels, but a huge number do. In fact, Rad, which is possibly the largest single brand in the U.S., is exclusively um, hub motors. So the advent of e-bikes and hub motors is a huge uh, kind of boon and challenge to wheel building. Uh, hub generators in the same way, the very large touring scene going on now, touring and bike camping. Uh, enduro riding is based on uh, generator hubs and those are wheel issues. And lastly, um, wheel retention, axle systems. Uh, now, rather than just quick release and a small number of widths, we've got quite a handful of widths and axle uh, compatibilities and diameters. That whole scene is a wheel specific scene. So that list I just made is our trends, which are uh, at the top of the industry's uh, current uh, uh, industry's current news and that are being navigated and uh, explained by wheel builders and which directly impact our work. The last uh, aspect of uh, uh, of the industry which explains why wheel building hasn't been wiped out, in fact, is quite the reverse trend, uh, is the matter of convenience. I mean, at no point in my life, at least, have people been as busy and time uh, scarce. So getting work done uh, quickly in order to maintain your riding means getting local solutions. And when it comes to wheels, which have their share of issues, whether it's tire and brake, spoke or uh, hub uh, integrity, the, the solutions to those problems have to come from locals, and that's going to be your local wheel builder. It's not going to be your wheel big brand. So convenience in that way. Um, secondly, expensive hubs. And I just listed, um, you know, e-bike motor hubs and generator hubs and disc brake hubs. When hubs carry more uh, function than simply rotation, they are... Uh, it's incumbent on us to reuse them. I mean, so there's a, a growing uh, sub-industry of rebuilding around hubs with integrity um, that means that even a very cost-effective uh, mass market uh, wheel solutions are not going to be as desirable when you just want to switch rims or you've just had rim damage and your hubs is uh, quite an investment. So wheel building is booming. So what does this mean? Well, I think one lesson is the majors aren't fading. Um, big brand builders like DT, Campagnolo, Fulcrum, Shimano, uh, SRAM seem to be doing plenty of business and will continue to attract uh, lots of customers. So as a merchant, uh, it, we have to... Uh, never be under the illusion that uh, mass market wheels or big brand wheels are obsolete or uh, no longer have a role to play. Their, their presence is strong, their products are uh, interesting, and in many cases uh, uh, mandatory. So uh, don't give them up 
just because uh, independent wheel building is going through such a renaissance. Secondly, uh, pay attention to the, the new brands, the brands that, are, that we've always known, but, but now the, there is street cred to a lot of hub, spoke, and rim brands that, that wasn't the case before. An extreme would be my early career when uh, top quality hubs were Campagnolo and mm, Campagnolo, and, uh, and Phil Wood was uh, the new kid on the block, but, but that made it too. I mean, and uh, rims were often not even known by the customer. They knew they had a sew-up or a touring rim. They weren't rim brand aware. And the same with spokes. That was a, a secret of each wheel builder. I mean, a wheel builder with a good reputation attracted customers who trusted them, but they didn't come to the builder for a brand of spoke and certainly would be happy to listen to a story about spokes, but uh, were basically ignorant. Today, a lot of people are aware of brands like Chris King, White, Industry Nine. Um, DT. These are hub brands that are that are that are well known among uh, quite a, a large number of riders. Same is true of rims, uh, from Head to Pacenti to H Sun and uh, and of course DT's range. There there are an enormous number of rim players. But what's more important to me is that the brands are actually. Uh, well known among a lot of writers and uh, so they have preferences and they have a curiosity that goes deeper than before making a custom product uh, more desirable for them so it, remember that uh, build, wheel building within a shop even a large shop can be just as personal just as effective as in an independent wheel only setting um, and so those who are noticing uh, freestanding, wheel-centric businesses should know that that is not the key to their popularity. That is just a, uh, an important characteristic, often a necessity. But wheel building can be cultivated within a store just as effectively. Uh, it's just as a matter of letting your builder builders um, have more control of that space. Uh, uh, be the only ones in it, represent it to the public, uh, handle orders in a uh, in a more uh, deliberate and meticulous way. But there's nothing about the context. It's not like a cuisine which really has a, I mean, Thai food in a non-Thai restaurant is fine, but the ambiance of a Thai restaurant is, is going to be distinctive and, and I think contribute a lot to the experience, but in in cycling, I think mm, not not so often. And so wheel building uh, is is going through a renaissance, but it's not to say that it needs to stand alone in its own uh, business. Uh, a couple things to uh, consider as a mechanic looking at this at all of this. Um, there are very few mechanics that can't build a wheel. So you've built wheels, you aren't helpless, uh, and I applaud you for that. But taking on wheel building as a serious specialty is another level. And so I really recommend, have always, but, but now as much as ever, recommend that you focus on that skill because if you want to set yourself apart and above uh, a group of mechanics, I think having wheel building really under your belt to where you've done quite a few sizes, quite a few formats and have a certain confidence and resourcefulness. You know where to go for answers, who to, who to ask, that, that, that everything is doable. They all have solutions. That sort of confidence uh, comes only by really focusing on the specialty. And to, uh, to do that as a mechanic, I think, is, is maximizing your value to any organization and I have always felt that the key to my having enjoyed a cycling career was always being able to direct 
my path and work with the people I prefer and go where I like. And that has been enabled by wheel building. Not many other specialties would have been quite so empowering. So at this point, whether you consider yourself a wheel builder first, mechanic second, or it's not so important, but I would focus on the specialty. It's, a, it's even more valuable today uh, than in the past. One other, one other thought is um, don't yield to the temptation to open a wheel building business as you're learning. I think you need to be well along and uh, skilled enough at building that, that when you open uh, a section of a store or your own store and focus on wheel building, that you can focus on the business and on your customers. Uh, to begin with, and and don't make that the point at which you're also trying to uh, put the finishing touches on your own skills. So uh, I would acquire wheel building skills um, through apprenticeship, uh, working in a busy shop where you get plenty of opportunity to build, certainly taking courses where you can, but uh, I, I don't recommend opening a wheel building business if you're just, begin just starting. And I think... One of the illusions is that it takes the, the equipment to, to be good. And uh, we all like the, the customer that we'll always hear from who said, I laced my wheel, but I took it into the local shop because uh, they have a truing stand and I don't. And so they'll finish it for me. Uh, the implication, of course, if I had the stand, I would, of course, done the finishing too. But it's not like that. It's, uh, it's much more of a skill that's independent of tools. So... Um, the role of tools in wheel building is, is often misunderstood, and I think if the public misunderstands it, it's okay. We can actually work that in our favor. But as a participant, as a builder yourself, don't, don't be thinking you can buy a spoke cutter and a fancy stand with gauges and tensiometer and, and other uh, dishing tools and, and be so well equipped that now it'll all come easily. Um, maybe if you were going to get into some simple kind of laser printing, it's more just a matter of buying the laser printer and sticking the art in it. Um, the learning curve is not so long, but in wheel building, it's gonna take uh, quite a while. I wouldn't say 10,000 wheels, but uh, give yourself some time to, um, to pick it all up. And, and lastly, tools in wheel building are as important to the customer as they are to you. That, you can't change that. Sorry, <laughs> you, you may only need a spare minimum of tools. Uh, the rest get in your way, maybe in your style of building. But customers see this stuff and they are curious and they tend to believe that accurate equipment is related to accurate work, that expensive um, wheel building fixtures enable you to do a better job. As long as that's the case, like having a, if you're going to do investment counseling, I think having your address in a high-priced district is implies that you're good at it, that you must be able to afford these these rents. Uh, those associations are just as old as the ages. So I would encourage you to equip your wheel building with that in mind. So erring on the side of fancy equipment that you like, but realizing that part of the investment is the quality of your wheels. But part of it is, these are fixtures that help me uh, sell my wheels, help attract and retain the interest of riders, uh, which make interesting conversation topics, um, and which can be resold when you um, turn the page. But uh, in the meantime, nice wheel building equipment is is uh, very interesting to uh, to your customer. So, what are some of the considerations if you're going to be setting up a wheel building business? Um, one, I'd say, which is a change from a few years ago, and brought about by some drastic spoke shortages that have plagued the whole world for the last. Uh, 
10 months or so, spoke threaders. I would highly recommend having a spoke threader or ready access to one. Now, spoke threaders go from $250, I mean, I'm just speaking new, $250 tools by Hoson, by Cyclo, um, that are just hand cranked, all the way up to three and four thousand dollar tools. So, which is appropriate to you is a uh, is another discussion. But but spoke threading uh, for small batches is uh, I think a must in in today's wheel building. So, I would put that high on your list. And if budget is scarce, you know, look for something used. Uh, consider just a hand. Uh, a little crank machine uh, for a couple hundred dollars, but at least realize spoke threading is something that's sort of a necessity t these days. Second, I think stands that have gauges on them, whether you use the gauges in each build or not, uh, are very important. Uh, too many manufacturers refer to trueness. Too many, I mean, every rider knows what true is, and they are going to, if they spin a wheel and look at it, they'll tell you, oh, that's fine. Uh, but you have to know it by the number, and the uh, gauges are just mandatory. So have a stand with gauges um, or access to one and um, and show it off. I mean, they not everybody owns a, a, a depth gauge, and uh, it looks like a, a pretty neat instrument. It can measure something you can't even see. So uh, when it comes to wheel trueness, uh, it, it may or may not uh, empower your your work, but I think having a, a stand with gauges is is important. Uh, tensiometers, of course, are mandatory. I would recommend owning more than one. I mean, they double check each other for one. That acknowledges that there's more than one way to do it, and I think you'll you'll get uh, greater insight into tensions by using more than one type of gauge. I mean. Park is a standby. There are um, millions of them out in use, uh, but I would consider owning some others. Um, I don't think your building will be high, more highly regarded because you own the most expensive gauge. People don't know the gauges by brand name, but they uh, it, can understand why a builder would want to own more than one gauge. I mean, some are better on bladed spokes. Some are better on uh, really fat uh, cargo bike spokes. So having more than one tensiometer and even collecting them as the years go by is not a bad idea. And besides, there are used ones floating around and cheap, uh, sort of counterfeit versions uh, that are on uh, eBay and elsewhere that are worth owning. They, they all function, they'll all reflect on each other, and I think you'll uh, be glad you own more than one. Uh, Additionally, have the wheel building setting in your store look uh, as comfortable and as desirable as possible. Um, whether it's all wood grained or or lab like is not that's that's a reflection of your own preferences. But I would work on that and, and make sure that it's an interesting place to look at. I mean, it it looks like a place that your customer wouldn't mind sitting. You know, it it shouldn't look like a hellhole or a puzzle that that only uh, a master could figure out because that'll just make questions in the customer's mind. So I would uh, make sure the setting works for you, but look at it from the customer's point of view as well. Uh, another point, uh, which it may be too obvious even to include in this list, but use labels. Have little stickers. They're too easy to get. They're inexpensive. Um, they it can be a logo or it could just be information, but every wheel you build that is made of new parts ought to get that sticker. And I would highly recommend having them be serially numbered so you have uh, the option to record the work you do, refer back to it for either warranty, recall, liability issues, or just a sense of pride. I think artwork you know, and limited batches of photographs or furniture are usually in, uh, labeled by the, the maker uh, and numbered. And there's a, there's a reason for that that applies to us just as well. It's our, it's our handiwork. It's our uh, best uh, 
best work uh, on the day that it's done and uh, it goes down in history and there's no reason you shouldn't be able to number it uh, for your own purposes if not for the the value it might uh, have in the future and lastly you got to ask questions in the world of bike. I mean in all of bike mechanics it's it's true too much is changing you need uh, tips from friends from news groups from press releases uh, from manufacturers, but you, you need to ask questions, and, and particularly in wheel building. Wheel builders are pretty generous with their advice, and uh, having a f small number of friends who are also wheel builders, they don't have to be any particular ones, but people who uh, are willing to engage each other with uh, uh, comments on certain brands, on certain trends, uh, can be a sounding board. Uh, I, w I think that sort of network is really important, and I am certainly should be part of your network. I mean, I'm, I don't know all that much about wheels, but I have a really un, uh, uh, kind of unmatched uh, uh, network of wheel-building friends. So if I haven't thought of it first myself, I probably heard of it from someone else who's maybe more nimble or working with equipment that I don't, I don't get a chance uh, get a crack at. So uh, asking questions all the time is uh, going to be related to how quickly you would advance your skills. So if you're building, make sure you do.